Hey, everybody, this is Debbie, and welcome to the Visible Visionaries. This, if you're here, you're here. <laughs> if you're here, it's because you belong here. I'm here because I belong here. I'm also here because my buddy, Beth Davis, and I talked last night, and we were actually talking about my gene keys, which is very interesting. Um, I find all these things you can get read about you so confirming about who you are out in the world and how you show up. I have, so I can actually look it up, but but it's more important because it's, it's not that germane to the story and how I got here, but I just want to say what is important about it is I have something, she could tell you in two seconds, oh, you have the key 19 and it's da-da-da, but um, <laughs> I won't even remember the name. But it talked about my healing abilities. And it's all like, it's amazing and prophetic and the timing is perfection. Because I was called last year, a great surprise to me, and I was told, knock, knock, who's there? Your healing abilities. My healing abilities, who? <laughs> Why, darling, you've had them all along. You've always had them. It felt very Wizard of Oz, right? You always knew where home was. So, Hello. Uh, journey began. Funny enough, the timing of this virus and this lockdown is coinciding with the beginning of all the workshops I was supposed to have gone to, to start to awaken, if you will, activate or explore my healing abilities. Now, there are certain ones I've been aware of for many years and I utilize all the time. It's indigenous to who I am. But there are new ones, and this particular gene key, which says that I can actually smell with my eyes, that I perceive things in ways that other people can't. Maybe tomorrow, you know, in, in a broadcast, I'll share with you what it what it says, because it was really interesting, but it literally said, the thing the divine told me was, you are already a shaman, you're already a healer, you're already a priestess. Okay, and this key 19 literally said, you already have shaman abilities. I was like, OMG, the universe is talking to me. So I want to tell you about an opportunity because inherent in what's happening right now are opportunities, right? Crisis, opportunity, without a doubt. So I find it, I find so much hilarious. And one of the things I'm finding hilarious, and I am going to ask you guys to engage in a minute and tell me what do you find to be so funny at this time, like this complete, ridiculous, perverse irony. So if I'm set to go to all these healing workshops and one after another has to cancel because we cannot be together, or at some point, of course, it'll be rescheduled, I feel like Source is saying to me right now, cool, because you had it all along, and now we're going to put you in a position to use it. So my buddy said to me, Beth, Baby, get on that Facebook Live, start a group, and start talking to your people because they need you. They need you. She's been in my book writing class before, and she said they need you to teach them how to write a book. They need you to get their message out. And, of course, that's another hilarious irony, isn't it? For all the people who ever said, I want to write a book, for all of us who have been overwhelmed, I've got my own stuff. Book's not a problem, but I've got my own things that I've wanted to do, and I just can't wrap my he my head around. It's like... Oh yeah, you can now. And it's also pretty amazing that we have the time to do this, right? So I am here for visionaries, spiritual entrepreneurs, people who are ready to get themselves out there. You may not know how fully, and that's cool because you're here with me and that's my plan is to help you get there. So, there's a couple of things I want to do tonight. The first is I really do want to talk about perverse, hilarious ironies because I have so many of them and I can't wait to share them with you and I really want to hear yours. The next thing is I want to do some EFT tapping and uh, EFT is emotional freedom technique. I will try to put up a chart and if I, if I can't figure out how to do that here and I bet I can figure out how to post it here, uh, put something up, I think I can. And if I can, then I, uh, yeah, I'd really love you to tap along with me. And the reason I say that is because if emotional freedom technique basically works on your meridians, right? It's the same thing that a, an acupuncturist works on. 
and it's incredibly profound, I will say. So when we uh, access these, we, we literally shift our energy. So I'm going to take you through some of that because it really uh, it is, will be my great pleasure to start to shift some energy. Okay. So we'll do some on anxiety and we'll do some on writing your book. We'll do some on getting a good night's sleep because I want to make sure that people feel like they can get a good night's sleep and start to let go of some things. All right. So some of my perverse ironies, I will tell you, are... <laughs> so I wanted a... I was ready to sell my mini and I had two people sign my Mini Cooper. I was, I had a couple of people came up to me actually on the street. I have a really particular Mini Cooper and they were like, I'll buy it from you when you're ready to sell, here's my number. And at the same time, I'm really ready to get, I was done with stick shift. I've been driving one for decades, loved it while I did it, but I'm ready, right? I'm ready for a shift. And I had chosen, I did a lot of research. I'm a researcher and I had chosen Alexis IS. And I thought, oh, you know, they're really little. I don't want a very big car. I live in Los Angeles, and but they're really, really nice, and they're just the most highly rated and they have the best resale value. So that was my car du jour. So I've been doing all this research and looking online, and I, I was going to get a used Lexus, a 2016, and like I really should always have somebody come with me when I buy a car, because as it turns out, like I got a beautiful car. I got a beautiful car, but it's hilarious because I have a new-ish car. I mean, it only had 27,000 miles on it, right? It's a gorgeous car, but I can't drive it anywhere. I'm in lockdown in Los Angeles. So <laughs> I have a new car that I can't drive, which is kind of hilarious. And I have my Mini Cooper, which I can't sell because none of these people can come look at it because we're on lockdown, right? We have to stay six feet away. There's no way we can drive around and they can test drive it. And so that's that. And everything's just sort of sitting there as is. I also think it's hilarious because I'm single. I can't date, right? There's no way you can. I don't know how dating apps are doing, but it must be really weird out there. I'm not on one right now at all. I think it's hilarious because I, I've been losing weight. I know people keep posting all these jokes about, you know, I used to look, like this and now oompa loompa, I'm like really huge. And it is really funny and I get it. And I have people, I have friends who are saying to me, I can't do my diet. Like I just have to sit in front of the TV and eat and stuff. <laughs> but I'm kind of au contraire. So I right now, um, I've actually lost weight. I look great. I feel great. <laughs> I would love to go out and like, da -da, you know, show people how I look. But that's sort of, Quite ironic that only I and my dog get to enjoy how I look. Because when I go out, ain't nobody enjoying it. I'm wearing a coat like this, a hat, a mask, gloves. I mean, I look like a freaking linebacker, you know? <laughs> so that's going on. And I would love you to post and just say, what is hilarious about this situation for you? Like, what is it that's maybe there's something spectacular going on in your life that you wish you could show people, tell people about, but you can't, because you can't really be in touch with anybody. Uh, what is it that you would like to, to share with us? Because I, I would really like to read, because I think there's going to be a lot of funny things. And here's the joke that I've been saying to my friends. This time is either one of two things. So just wait for it in nine months. We're even going to have more babies than ever before. Right? It's going to be a lot of people on lockdown getting it on. There's probably going to be a lot of babies. It's going to be a whole new baby boomer generation. Or, and or, well, probably and, there's going to be a lot of divorces. Because I know a lot of people, when I've said, like, I'm an extrovert, it's really weird to, like, not be with people. So I'm Zooming with people. I'm calling with people. I, I thank God one of the workshops, Dr. Sue Mortar, that I was signed up for, she's like a goddess. And she had to cancel it. She said, I'm not buying into the fear, but she said in an email, but we can't because of the health practices, we can't meet at the hotel we were supposed to do this workshop, but I'm gonna do it online for everybody. So I did the first class today and I have tomorrow and Sunday and I'm super grateful for that. And 
anyway, I, I lost track of, of what that was about, to tell you the truth. But um, I'm very grateful that she's doing it. Um, but I will use that to harken back to what I said in the beginning, which is about being a healer, right? And why I'm really here and why I'm doing this Zoom, this Facebook Live with you right now, because I feel like it is incumbent on me to share my gifts. My friend Beth Davis said, do it. You know, people are just waiting to learn how to write books. People are waiting to get their message out there. They're stuck at home. There's no better time on the planet to do it. And the other thing I do is I teach people how to get interviewed on radio and podcast and how to get results. Not everybody does the coaching part and the, you know, how to create the influencer relationship and all that. So I think all of that's super important. And like, why don't we use this time that you have to really prepare? You could be totally dancing and doing art and resting and reading books and Zooming and, and everything. But if you've got a book inside of you, let's do it. If you want to be interviewed on podcasts and radio, let's do it because you can do it from home. My brother, my sister-in-law, um, they have something called Calm with Cancer. And uh, they've got books and they've got amazing products and meditations and they, they've got, it's really beautiful what they've created. But they, they did it a long time ago and they're in business. And my brother wrote to me and said, is now a good time to be interviewed? What do you think? Uh, and do I have to tie everything into the coronavirus? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, headlines are great right now. You want to find something that's germane that people can hop on, but at the same time, offer them also another option. So there's a lot of different directions they could go. But um, I thought that was great that without me even saying anything to my brother David and my sister-in-law Tamara, that boop, they completely intuited this actually is a great time to use media to get your message out there. So... Um, do you guys know what tapping is? Oh, thank you, Victoria, who's the most beautiful of them all. You're, thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. So if you don't, I'll tell you what, if you don't know what tapping is, I would recommend that you Google tapping script diagram and just go there. And I was going to upload it, but you know what? I'll upload it later, but do it so you can follow along. And I'll, I'll also guide you through it. And the other thing I want to do is I have these amazing cards that I didn't create. And uh, <clears throat> they're, they were gifted to me, actually, by the woman who created them. And they're dragon cards. I've got a thing for dragons. And so I also want to pull cards. I'll pull one in the beginning and pull one in the end. And... Yeah, let's just see what's going on for everybody. Like, what is our message right now? Because we all know we got some messages going on. Um, that is for sure. So let me just make sure the cards are all in the right direction. So we'll pull one to start with. And then, of course, a couple of things. If you have something hilarious to share, please post it. I would be grateful because I want to read what you think is so funny about right now that you can't do or wish you could do. I'm open. Yeah. You, I love dragons too. Totally. And the other thing is if there's anything particular you would like to a learn about regarding books or interviews, please ask. It would be my, my pleasure uh, to answer questions. And also I want to make sure to remember very stream of consciousness is interesting for me to not like have an outline and just sort of flow. So <laughs> I'm doing my best here to follow my own train. So I do want to make sure to mention I am producing an anthology book called Dogs or Paradise. So if you are open to writing a chapter in the book, I will post the URL here. Please go to the URL and you will have to register. You know, don't write to me, Debbie, I want to do it. People who have registered already have registered here and that's the right way to do it. It also has all the information about the anthology. Um, I've done them before. I take people to international bestseller and I teach them actually how to write their chapter. And if people don't want to write, I interview them and then I transcribe it. I mean, it's an amazing process and, and the authors are completely held start to finish. So that's rolling out. And if, if you don't want to write a whole book, but you want to be a published author and you want to become an international bestseller, I got you. So go to debbyd.net slash anthology. And you can tell any kind of dog story. It can be fantasy. It can be 
about a real dog. You can be working for a canine unit. You can be a vet. You can have a service dog. You could have grown up with a dog. You could have seen a dog from afar. You could tell a story as though you were a dog. There's a lot of different directions you could go. So that is available, debbyd.net slash anthology. Mm. And I just want to say on behalf of my dog, who I don't know if she'll join us, but I'll try to introduce you to her. Her name is Shelby. She's been really, really sick. And uh, pretty scary. Uh, was really scary because she's like it. It's it, it's us in lockdown. And it's kind of, yeah, you know, she just doesn't do well. Uh, I couldn't even. But it was bad enough it really got my attention. Like about a week of throwing up, one day of diarrhea, and then two mornings where I woke up with a flood of pee. Literally sometime in the middle of the night, she got up, went in the dining room, and woof. And this is a dog who, she's four, she never has accidents. So it was really disconcerting to me. She was also drinking a lot of water, which can indicate kidneys and my alarms were going off. So I took her into the vet, very expensive as you can imagine the battery of tests. And, and I don't know why doctors do this, but by the time he was done with me, I was like, blah, 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 blah. You know, he's like diabetes and kidney failure and pancreas. And I'm like, ah! Can't you wait to after the blood test? Why do you go there? Why do people do that? It's really terrifying to hear. Like at a time like this, you don't need more bad information. You know, there's a there's a term for that, which is a black worm, a black hole. Like you put somebody something like that negative in somebody's consciousness, and then it's really hard to not think about that. So that was like difficult. Great vet though, he really is. I've known him for years and years, um, but that wasn't pleasant. So. In the meantime, I posted on Facebook and told everybody what was going on with Shelby, and I asked for prayers. And I got to say, the kindness of people right now is so moving. I mean, I had a list this long on my personal page of person after person sending prayers, people sending very specific information, uh, people who are pet psychics and communicators saying what they were seeing, and to a person, and I know many, many exquisite healers, uh, to a person, every single man and woman that I know and also are friends with on Facebook said, she's not sick, it's anxiety. She is interpreting what's going on in the world right now. And sure enough, that they were all working on her throughout the day. She, for the first time today, did not throw up. No accidents, amazing. She slept a lot while I was at Dr. Sue Warner's class and Yep, the doctors called and said the results are negative. Her blood test res is shows normal. That is awesome, really awesome. So I just want to say a big hallelujah and thank you to everybody who was so kind to pray and to send energy to her and to ascertain what was going on. I mean, the fact that you guys showed up like that the world's a good place. I'm telling you, if you know where, you, where to look and what to ask, it's a good place. So let us start and let us uh, pull a dragon card. So I'm going to just ask all of you to put your energy in here and, um, and, and also dig it. For the replay people, you know, even put your energy in here, okay? So let's just all, because I'm going to pull for us. So put your energy in here for... Let's just say the message you need to hear because we're going to pull one in the beginning and then after we do tapping, we'll shift and uh, we'll all be changed anyway. So we'll get a different message. So what is what is the message you have for everybody right now at this really auspicious time when people kind of need you? <laughs> dragon, they need dragon energy, right? A dragon's pretty fierce and they fly and they're mythical and they're beautiful. And I would like to ride one. So what is our energy? So I'll just shuffle for all of us. And I mean, that's interesting. My phone would ding like that at this moment, don't you think? Okay, this one is quite clearly calling. And here you go. This is the card that was picketh for youth. 
And it looks like it's an element dragon. So let's find out what your message is. And in the meantime, again, if you have any questions, wow, that was interesting. It's interesting only because it's the very first card. Number one is usually about beginnings. I'm actually wearing something that a friend bought, bought back from New Zealand for me. It's made by the Maori people, and you can see this is two ferns unfolding. It's really sacred. Nobody, Once I put it on, no one's supposed to touch it but me. And it is all, it's made of jade, and it's all about new beginnings. It's like super beautiful and meaningful. So we picked that, folks. So let's see what it says. It says, the element dragon offers you an opportunity to enter your golden temple of self and explore the nature of that which opposes you. Focus your attention on me as depicted on this card and your awareness on the energy being emitted through the symbols of my body. So I'll hold it up for you. That's the other side. These symbols represent the elements which make up who you and I are. Earth is the playing field and the battlefield of life and the blueprint through which we all learn and grow, being aware of the importance of being grounded in your body and taking care of your earthly responsibilities empowers you and builds your sense of self-worth. This is sabotaged by the opposing forces, often accompanying your emotions, which create the tug of war you feel. Applying a more rational and logical process to your emotional reactions will help you see where your negative or fearful emotions yank you out of your body, robbing you of self-worth and the ability to know a greater part of yourself. Allow me to show you your earthly talents and powers while I help you strengthen your ability to address your emotions rationally. And I have to say, I am going to work with the dragon to help you get there because I'm also going to show you your earthly talents and powers and maybe maybe your otherworldly uh, talents and powers because that's what I'm about. I'm a visibility shaman. I help people to write a page turner book. I help people to get to international guaranteed bestseller and I help people to be interviewed with great results. And I also, it's not just the strategy, it's not just the technique, but there's a lot of healing around the wounds of visibility. There are people who can function to just you know, so far in the jar, if you will, until they feel like, yeah, I think I think this is good enough. I'm not going to go any further. And even very high functioning people get there as well, right? So if you're reaching your bar, your ceiling, it's time. It's really time to expand. What else does the dragon say? I'm here to remind you of the importance of feeling your emotions in order to allow them to flow along the natural course of life rather than becoming frozen due to detachment or a flood due to oversensitive or irrational emotional outbursts. Life changes and global warming has catalyze change forever. This is amazing, don't you think? Oh my God, this is so apropos. This is reflecting the transformative nature of your emotions and becoming aware of how you can channel this emotional energy into something creative and practical. Write a book. Oh my God, this is awesome. Therefore, establishing the middle ground between the opposition of earth and water. In other words, your physical life and your creativity and emotions. Beautiful. Air is the unseen world of the mind. The nature of your mind will oppose your ability to take flight and dream your dreams if you allow fearful and outdated thoughts to stop you from getting up, take, taking action, and doing something totally different. I am here to help you take flight and rekindle the fire of some of your dreams. I come to help you break down your dream, hope, or wish, your realization, or answer into achievable steps. Oh, my God. I got to claim the element dragon. This is what I'm talking about, people. Fire is the passion inside which drives you to achieve your goals and is the raging furnace being fueled by your anger, jealousy, envy, and lack of forgiveness. Let me help you transform your raging furnace into a steady burning fire and use the energy of your anger to drive you to fight for what is right and blaze a new trail ahead of you. Our energies united and aligned within the essence of balance, 
bring balance to all aspects of your life. Allow your passion to live, to drive you to merge with the richest of your dreams and take action now to make it a reality. I, the Element Dragon, will guide you along the pathway of transformation and assist you in retrieving the precious gifts your soul embodies. You will be reborn soon. It is time to reflect on what you want to manifest and take action. This is an important time of transformation and healing. Soul searching gives you answers to many of your deep-seated questions. Enlightenment and the will to create harmony and balance within life produces results. Thank you very much. That was so, so beautiful. Really was so apropos. And I also want to read to you something that I um, wrote down today about fear. I thought this was really important. Um, Dr. Sue Mortar said it. The energy of fear is the energy of personal power that doesn't know where to go. It has the power to transmute anything and have the life it came here to have. Fear only comes from the mind. So again, the energy of fear is the energy of personal power that doesn't know where to go. Pretty powerful, right? And my journal, because I wrote up a whole bunch of things about what I want to do and accomplish and be. So um, folks, I would recommend that we do some tapping and let's shift some energy. So just right here, if you're game to do some emotional freedom technique tapping, and I promise you, you're going to feel really different by the time we're done. Just write in the chat box, I'm in, I wanna tap, I wanna do this, and if so, I will take us there. Um, do you guys know what emotional freedom technique is? Let me see if I can explain it to you. I've been doing it for so long. Let's see if I can give you a little something something. It's a form of counseling intervention that's interesting, that draws on various theories of alternative medicine, including acupuncture, neuro-linguistic program, energy medicine, and thought field therapy. That's very interesting. Well, it was created by Gary Craig, you know, people like Jack Canfield, Nick Ortner use it, and um, it's very, very powerful, and it helps you transform trauma, and other things, it doesn't even have to be trauma, it can be things you really want to just create. So let's go ahead and what I, again, what I would recommend is you Google a diagram of emotional freedom technique so you know where to tap and just follow along. The other thing is, obviously, if you're watching me, you can follow along and I'll tell you where the, the points are. So we always start in the karate chop. That's what we call this. And you can do either hand. It doesn't matter. So we start in the karate chop. And we usually get out some thoughts that are getting in our way, the obstacle thoughts. And then we do a couple of rounds, meaning we go all the way through all the points, tapping and saying words. And even if you are saying, ah, I don't fully feel that way about something I might say, there may be an energy like that. But the, the idea, by the way, you're never implanting anything. Just so you know, you're only ridding yourself. You're rewiring and in a really positive way. So if there's anything untoward inside of you right now that's running you, that is anxious, that is fearful, that is not working for you, this will get rid of it. And we can also put in place some things that will make you feel way more free. There's a reason why the word freedom, emotional freedom, is in the title, or EFT. So I will take you through the points. This is where we start in karate chop. And then, you know, depending um, I usually go all the way through. I When I do it myself, I may keep it simple, but one of our points is here. You can, again, what use one hand or both. Then we go here by the eyebrow. This is another point. Then we go here, and it's on the bone. And again, you could do both hands if you like, or one hand, and it's fine. Then we go here, again, the bone under the eye. Then we go here under the nose. You can feel a little crease here. Then under the, the crease of the chin, right here, the divot, we go here. Then on your, this is my collar, you can see my collarbone right here. We go in the collarbone. 
Then we go under the arm, and um, it's like for women, it's on the bra line, right? Then we tap here. Then you can tap here on the wrist and back to the karate chop. And usually we might end by holding the wrist, taking a deep breath, and saying the word peace. So if you're in, we're going to start. And where I want to start with you is anxiety. So let's shift some anxiety. This is a tapping script perfection for right now. And just follow along and I'll speak and then you speak, right? So I'm going to say it out loud. And after I say it out loud, there'll be a silence because I'm waiting for you to speak. All right, here we go. Starting on the karate chop, and then we'll go to the top of the head on the crown. Even though I have all this anxiety and stress right now, I accept myself anyway. Even though I have all this anxiety and stress right now, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though what's happening in the world right now is creating all this anxiety and stress, and it is exhausting, I accept myself no matter what. I'm going to go to the top of the head, crown. This anxiety, eyebrow. This stress about the world, side of eye all the stress under eye, all this worry under nose. It's exhausting above chin, all this stress, collarbone, all this fear under arm, this fear about what's going on in the world, wrist point. I want to let it go karate chop, but I'm so scared. Round two, top of the head, this stress, eyebrow, this fear, side of eye, this worry, under eye, all this stress, under nose, this condition of people's health in the world, Collarbone. This issue. Chin. All these stressful feelings. Underarm. All this fear. Wrist point. It's too much. Karate chop. It's too overwhelming. Take a deep breath. Shake out your hands, blow it out, and now we're going to tap to make you feel better. Top of the head, all the stress, eyebrow, all this fear about what's going on, side of eye. I just want to feel better. Under eye, I want to feel at ease. Under nose, I want to feel calm and confident. Chin, but I still have all the stress. Collarbone, this fear. Underarm, all this fear. Wrist point, this fear. Karate chop, all this remaining fear. Take another deep breath. <sighs> Shake out your hands. Top of the head. These remaining fears about what's going on and how is this all going to play out? Eyebrow. I wonder if I could feel more calm about this. Side of eye. I wonder if I could feel more at ease in this situation. Under eye. I'm open to that. Under nose, I'm open to feeling more calm and confident. Chin, I'm open to taking deep breaths and feeling grounded. 
collarbone, this remaining fear, underarm, this remaining anxiety, wrist point, these remaining fearful feelings. Karate chop, what if I could trust that I am safe? Next round, top of head. What if I've always been safe? Eyebrow, what if I can feel grounded with my feet firmly planted on the ground? Side of eye, I'm open to that. Under eye, I'm open to feeling calm and confident. Under nose, I'm open to feeling safe. Chin, I'm open to taking deep, relaxing breaths, knowing I am safe. Collarbone, I'm not alone. Underarm, I choose to feel safe no matter what is going on in my life. Wrist, I choose to feel grounded. Karate chop, I choose to feel calm. I choose to feel confident. I choose to feel safe. What if I am safe? I am calm. I am relaxed. I am safe. Take a deep breath. Breathe it out. Ha! And hold your wrist and say peace. Good job. Good job. Good job. How do you feel? Just right below how that makes you feel. It is it is the most extraordinary practice. And, it's, you know, look, in the best of times, I use this every day. It's changed my life. It's completely changed my life on every count. You can use it for anything. I'm even going to do some tapping with you about writing a book. So we can open up some energy there. And just feel the shift. You know, I had a client, a book client, and we were working together, and this boy, this man was writing his book, writing his book, uh, doing such great work, and his life exploded. I mean, like a lot happened all at once, and his marriage crumbled, and, you know, it's a lot for anybody on a good day, right? And he was just, he would come to our sessions and say, I can't even think straight. I, I, I don't... All I, want, I, all I want to do is write, but I don't even have the capacity to write. And I think that's sort of the energy of right now, although now is, you know, kind of dramatic for a lot of people. And I would say to him, okay, well, let's see what we can do to get you into the space where that's not your reality. We're losing the capacity to focus. We're being completely overwhelmed and overtaken by just, you know, darkness and energy isn't the experience that you're choosing. So we literally would do an hour of tapping because we we had a couple, we would do sometimes two hour sessions and we would do an hour of tapping and he was otherworldly by the time we're done. I mean, even if you did five or 10 minutes a day, it will change you. That's how amazing this is. So cheers to that. My lemon thieves oil water, which is very good for me. And not exactly delicious. <laughs> the thieves oil is very healthy, but Lord. So let's do a little bit more. And I think, and if there's anything you would like to tap on in particular, I would be happy to do this. Um, you know, subject wise, and certainly going forward when I do more broadcasts, let me know. So the tapping I want to do right now is specifically about you releasing the inability to write a book. Because, as I said, there could be no better time on the planet when you're locked inside your house. And, you know, and let me open this up because I also know people who have lost their jobs right now. They went to their job and, bye-bye. This is our last day. We're closing doors, sending everybody home. You're laid off, right? Pretty dramatic. So for those people, I would ask you, and I, and I don't make light of anybody's situation. I would ask you, what is yours to do? 
because for many people, they're showing up at jobs and they really don't love that job. They may tell themselves they love that job because it pays the bills-ish, but it's like, really, if this was an opportunity, if crisis equals opportunity, what is it that you really are here to do? Like if you had a week left to your life, what would you be running around doing? Chances are that somewhere in that is what you're here to do, right? You want to be living life from that space, whatever that is. So it may be, I just want to get my book written. It may be, I, I want to do a podcast. I want to be interviewed on podcasts. I want to travel the world. I want to be a ski instructor. I want to, there's so many ways that you can start showing up and creating joy in your life going forward. This will end, this will end, it really will at some point, whether it's a day or a week or three weeks. But what are you gonna do with that time? What kind of opportunity are you gonna create? What kind of seeds can you plant and get going? What kind of action can you take? So I wanna start to dispel the lack of focus and the overwhelm and a little bit of the madness going on so that instead we can start creating what we'd really like to create. So let's do some tapping on writing a book, yes? Awesome. Okay. So let's see where I shall start. All right. So we're going to start in the karate chop again. I hope you can see me. Even though I feel frustrated because I cannot focus on writing a book, I love and accept myself. Even though I am so frustrated because I'm overwhelmed and I can't even think straight and I definitely can't focus. I'll never be able to write a book. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself even though I cannot focus on writing a book, which makes me feel frustrated. And I deeply appreciate and honor myself. Now starting at the top of the head, we're gonna tap all the way through. When I experience that I cannot focus and I don't know where to start, It affects me because I want to write a book, but I have no idea how to write a book. Eyebrow. The negative outcome of this is that I have no brain capacity. Side of eye. I am overwhelmed. Under eye. The negative outcome of this is that I regret not writing a book. Under your nose, and a book is still inside of me. Chin, becoming an author is still inside of me. Collarbone, being a writer is inside of me unexpressed. Under your arm, this outcome makes me feel like I know writing a book would be cathartic for me. Wrist point, I am inspired to write a book, but I feel pretty lost about how to write a book. Karate chop. Maybe there is a way out. Maybe I could find a way to do it. Top of the head. Otherwise, I will die with my message inside me. Eyebrow. I will regret not writing the book. Side of eye. I have many friends who have written a book and they have succeeded. 
under I, I would like to write a book too and succeed. Under your nose, what if I gave myself permission to write a book? Chin, what if I gave myself permission to be an author? Collarbone, what if I gave myself permission to just start the process? Underarm, I give myself permission to believe that I can change this. Wrist, I give myself permission to believe that I can write a book. Karate Chop, I will learn from a book coach how to write a book. So my book gets written quickly and easily. Top of head, once I decide to do something, I always follow through and make it so. Eyebrow, I will align myself with an expert. Side of eye, I will put aside time each day to write. Under eye, I will join a program or find a group to help me. Under nose, maybe I can get help right now. Chin, I am locked inside anyway. <laughs> this is actually a perfect time to write. Collarbone, writing a book will help me focus. Underarm, writing a book will help me feel better at this time. Wrist, everything happens perfectly at the right time. Karate Chop, I am an author. Top of head, I am claiming that now. Eyebrow, I am a writer. Sight of eye, I can write a book. Under eye, in order to write a book, you have to start writing. Under nose, I choose to start writing and make that part of my daily action plan. Chin, I am feeling much more free around the idea of writing a book. Collarbone, I will write a book. Underarm, I will write a book and it will be a wonderful process. Wrist, I know it. Karate chop, I am claiming that now. Take a deep breath and blow it out. Hold your wrist and say peace. Doesn't that feel good? I feel it too, and I'm an author. I've written three international best-selling books, so, um, and I help authors all the time, and I can feel this like majorly shifting my energy, majorly shifting my energy. So uh, the final script, and I want to be a little cautious with this because I, uh, the final script I'm going to do, I don't know if I'm going to do it right now, but it's really about sleeping. So for if anybody's having trouble sleeping and if you have stress, I'm happy to take you through that. Or if there's something you'd rather tap on, we could do that. And the other thing is um, feel free to ask some questions because you have me, right? It's like we're all in this amazing situation, right? And I don't know if you're all in Los Angeles or where you're at or if you're on lockdown too, but we are. I can tell you uh, – Wow, I had to go to UPS today to return some boxes. Like I was saying, really timely. UPS was closed. The post office was closed. Um, I just, yeah. And I went to Target because, you know, the whole toilet paper situation, it's for real. Shelves, just there. One of my best friends uh, is from Hungary originally, and she said in 16 years she hasn't experienced anything like this since she left her communist country. And it's like really strange for her, but she grew up with this. And, you know, I wanted to get rice because Shelby has been sick, right, Shelby? And I, um, yeah, I was going to make her some chicken and bone broth and just white rice because it's really good on the tummy. No rice, like no rice 
anywhere. I went on, yeah, we can order from grocery stores here online. Mm -mm, none of the things I need, not even rice. It's like, what? This is so wild. I didn't know people ate so much rice. I'm, I'm a, I don't do a lot of carbs, so that's not even my reality. But for my baby, I really wanted rice. So, uh, yeah. So here's the deal, yo, visionary people. If you want to be a visible visionary, you need to know what it is you're here to put out and how you're going to disseminate that. So what is your message? What is it? And I don't really want to do the whole message branding thing, but I really mean, what are you here to talk about? What is your vision way beyond where you are right now? Because wherever you're op operating right now, we are being called to a much greater being who we be out in the world. And we're really being called to come together. You know, synergy is a fascinating thing to, to be able to connect like this. I'm in, I am such an in-person person. So to not be able to touch y'all, not be at a workshop or a retreat with you, uh, to be doing this with this between us is um, fascinating, not the most fun, and how lucky are we that we have this, right? What a time in life to have all this incredible technology so we can do this. So I don't know if you guys have any, I was talking about your perverse jokes about all the things you have uh, that have happened to you that you're like, oh my God. So for me, again, it was like, I got a new car, I got a new Lexus, but I can't drive it anymore. I'm on lockdown. I can't sell my Mini Cooper. I'm on lockdown. I... You know, I'm single right now. I can't date. <laughs> um, yeah, there's just like a lot of, like, everybody's talking about how they're gaining weight. I've been losing weight. I would love to show everybody how fabulous I look right now and get all dressed up and stuff. Not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of interesting. I would like to know what is kind of funny-ish on your end. And I will say I have to make a big play to talk about a TV show people told me to watch. I'm actually, strangely enough, watching less TV, like so much less, because I'm really creating right now. Like creation is important. Now, and I'm going to talk about the show, but I also want to talk about creation. So it's um, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Yeah. My buddy said, Deb, I can't believe you're not watching it. You got to check it out. That is so your show. It's like Glee meets 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 and apparently this gal had a YouTube channel and she had so many people who followed this show Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist they made the TV show I'm like binge watching this thing it is incredible so good so I highly recommend you watch it it's really really good and, it, and you know the other thing is I realized the shows I have I was not bearing how serious and, you know, they, I have some very intense shows that I follow. I guess I enjoy, I definitely enjoy mysteries, but um, I was like, yeah, I, I, I'm not into that right now. Like Curb Your Enthusiasm is really good for me. It's always extraordinary playlist. I need levity. Like I need a lot of that right now. Uh, so the other thing I was going to talk about was the creativity. So I would highly recommend if you, I'm going to ask you some questions, and you can write these down. And please, you know, make make just um, make just some notes about where you're at. Right, crisis opportunity, because I think it's really important. Doesn't have to be, but I think if you're a visible visionary, it is. I mean, the biggest joke, not joke in the world, is. <laughs> Were you wondering if you were a light worker? Are you breathing? Ta-da! <laughs> I think you be one. And we're here to do great good out into the world. So for me, this group right here is me stepping up and saying, you know, I, I, I have been ready to explore in a whole new way, not just Claire Sendians, Claire Cognizance, la la. This I, this I know, this I've used. But I mean, like, I was really ready to deep dive. I've had friends who have been showing up and on their own doing sessions, just gifting me because they love me and I love them. And that's how we operate. And we've been doing lots of act activations over the last couple of months. But now it was like, for real, I was signed up for some workshops, you know, to really, like, get shamanism and really explore some deep energy medicine. Canceled. 
And here's why I think it's hilarious. Will I get there eventually? Of course I will. Of course they'll reschedule, of course, right? But it's freaking hilarious because I feel like for the longest time, Source has been trying to get my attention. Why hasn't Source gotten my attention? Well, no, they've gotten my attention. Why haven't I stopped to really engage? That's really the apropos question. Is because I'm too busy. And that is the energy. That is a really difficult record groove to get out of. Busy, 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 busy. I don't know how to get out of it often. But I'm out of it right now. I mean, I think that's hilarious, right? You got my attention. You got my attention. So what are the things we've always wanted to do? So let's, let's ask some questions because I think it's awesome if you would answer them as well for yourself, which is how would I like to be on a more consistent basis? How would you like to be on a more consistent basis? Happy, relaxed, connected to source, enjoying daily spiritual practices, and if so, what are those specifically? Funny, present, calm, knowing, remembering who you are, soaring to new heights, joy-filled, I'm just really sharing from my own writing, abundant, carefree, chill, <laughs> spontaneous, I kind of am, but more would be good. Confident, I kind of am, but more is good. So next question is, if my life could be any way I choose, how would it be? And you just start to like jot down notes. How would it be? What would your life look like? Because obviously we're moving towards creating that in these questions, right? And then the next question is, how would I feel if I knew, excuse me, that's not the next question. Ah, if there was one thing I could say was in my way, what would I name? And I'll ask you, is it money? Is it freedom? Is it relationship? Is it self-love? Is it weight loss? Is it drive, focus, depression, family? I don't know, fill in the blank. But if there was one thing you can name that's in your way, what would that be? Question four, how would I feel if I knew how to remove that obstacle? Question six, what is my purpose? Question three things, goals, visions, I want to have be true in my life. So what would you like to manifest in your life right now? I'm pretty clear. I wrote down 13 things. I'm pretty clear. It's great because once upon a time when I used to answer questions like that, it went on ad infinitum. I mean, really? It was like an old biblical scroll. It was overwhelming. There was so much I wanted. I've created so many things, but but it's for me very niche right now. It's you know pretty clear. There are a couple of different areas, but I'm pretty clear what that looks like and feels like. Next question, if I could have it any way I chose, what would that look like? If you could live your life any way you chose, what would your life look like, right? I mean, would you end everything you're doing right now? Would you say, all right, man, I can wipe the slate clean. I can rewrite the script. I'm throwing out that script. Everything as I do it right now would end. Or would there be a bunch of things or some things like I'm, I would not do that if I could choose adios and in its place would be and go there, go big. Remember, I talked about the jar to which you can function. What if you could go beyond that jar? Because that's really what being a visible visionary is all about is going there. Next. How would I spend my day? Would you be in nature? Would you, would you be with a dog? Would you be traveling? Would you be doing retreats and workshops? Would you be eating amazing food, drinking amazing wine? I would be drinking amazing wine, not every day, but I would, would you be in joy and love? Would you be with a partner? Would you be with friends, family? What does that look like on your own? What and who would be around me with that life? And then what might I need to let go of in order to have that happen with grace. So I answered all those questions. I highly recommend that you do as well. 
And um, I even wrote up some daily practices that I'm going to be engage in, engaging in every day. So I was talking about the busy, busy, busy. And that's definitely the part of my life like, okay, not only would I did I write that I would end it, but source ensured it would end. So you're on lockdown. It's over, right? All that crazy, busy running. I, it's awesome. So daily practices. And I know meditation is a really easy go-to. And maybe dancing in the living room is another one. For me, I have some amazing sacred tobacco. Um, it wasn't inexpensive, I'll tell you, when I bought it online. But when you make it, and I have, have it made, you spray yourself. You spritz yourself with it in the morning, and you, ha you set your intention. Because it's the first thing in the morning. It's the way to start the day. You've cleansed yourself. And you get to set in motion everything you want, your intentions. And at the end of the day, there is actually a bitter, not the morning one is sweet tobacco spray. And it, it does smell very good. And the evening one is a bitter one. You spray yourself with to take all the energies off of you from the day and literally have the day. So that's one of the things I want to add. And I'm just trying to give you ideas. And you can certainly post what, what you want to do. Certainly, look, here's the thing about reading. I, I used to be a voracious reader until I got into radio and podcasts. This is so sad. But when you have to read people's books every week who you're interviewing, for me anyway, the love of reading mostly went away because it became a job. It literally became a J-O-B. And, you know, also having to read at that rate to get somebody's book, cram somebody's book in so I can know what I was talking about. It was a lot. So I will tell you that... Um, yeah, I want to get back to my joy of reading a novel. God, I used to love novels. I bought Audible, and it's just sort of been sitting there, and I would like to engage with Audible. That's also something I really enjoy, taking naps and resting. I, I love treating my body well. Um, visioning, speaking out. I mean, I definitely know I need to spend time with Source. Source has big plans for me, right? They want to activate my power. And uh, so, so what is it for you? I mean, like if I did those most of those throughout every day, that would be a boss, badass day for me. And then whatever else, right? Doing a Facebook Live with you. And I have other things. You know, I still have people I'm speaking to and uh, clients and this and that. So there you have it. You know, people, if I can help you write your book, reach out to me. You can DM me. You can go to my website, debbie-inger.com. If you would like to do a chapter, write a chapter for the dog anthology, go to debbied.net slash anthology. If you are interested in being interviewed on radio and podcasts, I'm happy to help you there as well. And also I have um, some amazing products. If you'd rather like, I don't even want to engage. I have so much time and capacity. I just want to do an online program at my own pace. I have those two. Just reach out and let's have a conversation and see where you're meant to start and to get your visible visionary -ness off the ground. So I think I'll do two more things here and uh, before we close. And I'm going to do another tap. So I want to make sure you guys have a really good sleep tonight. So let's ensure you have a great sleep. And then we will cast another card for you from the Dragon series. So you have your message at the end. The message in the beginning, I got to say, was pretty powerful. So let's find out what your message in the end is. And I'll ask you for your energy before we do that to put it in the card. So I make sure this message is for you. And I don't know. I, I, I was going to bring my dog up here so you could meet Shelby the dog. But she's sleeping. And I just realized, how would I hold a dog and tap at the same time? It could be really interesting. So we'll bring her up later. Okay. So remember all the points. We're going to start. And again, you can... Bring up a chart and emotional freedom technique diagram is very easy to Google and you can use that a reference. Also, you can follow me. So this is so that we get, make sure you have a good night's sleep tonight. Karate chop. And just follow after me and repeat out loud. Say it out loud where you are if you can. If you're in a room where you can, if not, you can think it. But it's better to say it out loud if you can. Okay. So I will say it and repeat what I'm doing physically and also vocally. I'll leave enough time for you to speak it too. Even though I'm unable to sleep in the night, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even
even though I find it hard to believe that I can go to sleep, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I got used to being up all night, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have a very disturbed sleep, I deeply and completely accept myself. Even though a part of me wants to sleep, and a part of me wants to worry and be awake. And I'm guarding myself and not feeling safe. I choose to accept all parts of me. Eyebrow, and we're going to tap through. Difficulty falling asleep. Side of eye feeling very tired and exhausted. Under eye, so frustrated and bored being awake all night. Under nose, so many thoughts come to my mind. I feel very distracted. Shin, wouldn't it be nice to put all my thoughts into storage just during the night. Collarbone. Wouldn't it be nice to get an uninterrupted sleep? Underarm. What if I could choose to relax and feel safe even if I'm awake all through the night? Top of head. I give myself permission to sleep tonight. I deserve a good night's sleep. Eyebrow. Letting go of all the stress that is stuck in my body. Side of eye. Releasing all thoughts of discomfort. Under eye. Choosing to believe that I can sleep through the night. Under nose, as I toss and turn all through the night. Chin, I give my body and my mind permission to stay calm and peaceful. Collarbone, I thank my bed for giving me the comfort of stretching and resting my body. <laughs> Under arm, I let my thoughts, my worries, and my anxiety slowly drift away. Top of head, I release all the tension and resistance in my body and mind to fall asleep. I deserve a good night's sleep. Eyebrow, I am grateful for a wonderful day. Sight of eye, I'm grateful for all the good and blessings in my life. Under eye, I'm grateful for being able to put my worries, fears, and stressors away for now. Under nose, I'm grateful for all the choices I have in my life. Chin, I'm grateful for my good health and balance in my life. Collarbone, I'm grateful for working from home and having so many connections today. Under arm, I'm grateful 
for all the wonderful relationships in my life. Wrist, I'm grateful for letting go of my worries. Karate Chop, I am grateful for letting go of my fears. Karate Chop, I am letting go of all stress. I am releasing all anxiety right now. Top of head, I deserve a good night's sleep. Tonight, I allow my mind to fall asleep. Tonight, I allow my body to fall asleep. Check out your hands. Take a deep breath and hold your wrist and say peace. Well, I really hope that helped you. Um, I know it helped me. I feel amazing. And I guess I'll pull us our final card for the night. Um, I can't wait. I hope you guys will post below. Uh, you know, go ahead, have at it. Also, let me know what you want me if I when I, as I continue doing this, Shelby the dog, these are the people who prayed for you. Do you know that? These are the people who were actually working on you today. I think we should lower the camera so you, you could see this little pumpkin. So this is my puppy that you've been working on today. Um, I'm going to move this so she's way more woo, interesting to look at. These are the people, Shelby, right here. You see in the camera? These are the people who prayed for you and helped you get better and helped you stop throwing up. This is a very sensitive puppy who knew what's going on in the world and she freaked. She's had a rough couple of days and uh, we, bo we both thank you so much for showing up for us and being so amazing and loving. And um, yeah, you guys have been incredible. I, it's incredible as a community how everybody came together. So Shelby thanks you, she's wearing her thunder shirt which helps dogs with anxiety, by the way. And um, today's the first day she didn't throw up, which is amazing. And that's, that's you. So thank you, and I love you. I really do. You guys really showed up today, and I'm so moved by that. And a bunch of people even DM me, and they were like, I'm reading her, and this is what's going on, and I'm telling you she's not sick. And um, she is, like, really distressed. She's worried for you, me. She's worried for the world. She doesn't understand what's going on. She knows that there's been some changes, and and uh, they were right. The doctor called after the battery of tests that were done yesterday, and they said, yeah, her results are normal. And, man, she was having a lot of problems. It wasn't just the throwing up. So that's miraculous, and what you guys did today was miraculous. Okay, so put your energy in here, all of you, even in the replay. Put your energy into the dragon card, and let's pick your final card before we send each other off and say guten tag. I love you. Auf Wiedersehen. Adieu. Shalom. <laughs> Arrivederci. <laughs> okay, put your energy in here. All right, and then we'll shuffle it three times. One more. Close my eyes. Hmm. All right. So this is, wow, what a card, what a, what a card, what a card, what a card, what a mighty fine card. So this is the one y'all picked. Moon, I'm being followed by a moon dragon, woo, dragon, moon dragon. Leaping and hopping on a moon dragon, moon dragon, moon dragon. And if I ever lose my eyes, all my color will run dry. If I ever lose my eyes, oh, e -e 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 I won't have to look no more. I'm being found by a moon dragon. Moon dragon, moon dragon. Okay, well, if you were a moon dragon, what page would you be on? These cards are so cool. They're called Dragon Footprints. Um, Michelle Manders, I just want to give her credit. 
South Africa. She's amazing, by the way. She's really a profound psychic healer. She should be here. I don't know where Michelle is out in the world, but she's extraordinary. So again, let's find out where our moon, because otherwise I'll just keep singing to you. You know, that could be a thing. So moon dragon, which really does sound like that song, is card 13. Okay, which is interesting. We started with card one, which I thought was incredibly apropos. So let's see what moon dragon is all about. I'm born under a moon sign. I'm a Cancer with a Leo rising Scorpio moon. So I know some about moon, but I don't know if it even relates to moon dragon. But this is not long, actually, at all. So let's see what it says. And this is your card. This is what I send you off into the world. This is your message, your massage. And as I like to say about it, when you have a message, it means me sage, right? There, there's a sage living inside of you, and that's why you're here as a visible, as a visible visionary, V2. Me too. Okay. Moon Dragon. Your passionate desire to embark upon a journey of empowerment and liberation has brought me to you. I, the Moon Dragon, come to show you the hidden mysteries within life as well as the hidden mysteries within yourself. Illusions have long sabotaged your efforts to arise and be the liberator you are destined to be. My presence and guardianship over you at this time is your signal to allow the oracle within to speak. Your spirit family are calling to you to join the circle of light hidden beneath the murky waters of self-doubt and negative thought patterns. This is an opportunity to lead by example in order to liberate yourself and others. The moon rays I extend to you will reveal to you the illusions you have brought into that no brought brought in that no longer serve you so that you can confidently embrace your passion and desire to embark upon the journey of empowerment you so desire life is full of surprises therefore surrender to your inner passion rejoice and be surprised i bring you positive change this card embodies the energy of, of the cosmic law of energy. This is exactly what I've been talking about. OMG. And this is why this group is created. And I feel like that card just blessed our group and all of you individually. So, you know, go forth and multiply. It really is our time. We are the light workers. We are the visionaries. And we need to be visible at this time more than ever. If it is yours to write a book, start writing that book. And I did some tapping earlier, so if you're coming at the end, make sure you go back and watch this whole uh, replay because it's got a bunch of EFT tapping that's really powerful. And also, uh, send, you know, send questions to me that you would like answered about writing a book, about how to get started, let me help you. Or, you know, if it's about being interviewed and getting results, whatever it is, frankly, about being visible, it is my jam. It's what I love doing. It's what I be out in the world. And I would be thrilled to help you get there. So thanks for joining me. And I will be broadcasting again to you V2 people, you visible visionaries. I love you all. I feel deeply connected to you. And know that I'm here. Like, I'm really here for you. Let me know how I can be here for you. Good night.